Good evening, folks. I thought I'd like to talk about a very important topic and I uh, that's probably been on a lot of people's mind, and that is the subject of revival. And the question that everybody has, is revival possible in, in the day and age that we're living in? I don't know. I'm not sure. But there's been a lot of people talking about it. I know that there are some Christians out there that are hoping for revival. And I've heard both sides of the issue. And, I, and, and, and I'm, I'm not really sure, but there's been a lot of talk about revival. So I'm kind of on the fence about it, but I've heard several interviews about it. So I would the, probably the best way to best way to probably explain it is just try to get a different perspective on, uh, on what other people are saying about revival. And there's a guy out there that just wrote a book. You may or I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but his name is Chuck Gerard. And he just came out with a book called Rock and Roll Preacher. Uh, Chuck Gerard is actually a pioneer in rock and roll. He was kind of the lot of the kind of some of the people that started the Jesus movement back in the 60s. Uh, he started a group called the Castells, and they had a few hits, and he was also in the surf rock group, uh, the Hondells. But later on, he probably got together with Chuck Smith and they got the Jesus movement movement started back in probably in the late 60s and when when it and his daughter his daughter her name is Elisa Childers she was part she's got her own YouTube channel and she was part of the so-called Christian rock group that the no the Christian group Zoe girl she was the lead singer and she's also got her Lou channel so Chuck Gerard is her dad and so I'm going to kind of uh he was on recently just a few months ago with Theology Mom she's got her own channel on YouTube so just to kind of give you a perspective on about revival I just thought I what I the best thing I could do is possibly um is um try to get their perspective on, on on revival. So I'll just let Chuck Gerard speak for himself and then I'll give my opinion of and see if I, and see if and see what he says about revival. Here we go. Your conversations with your daughter Elisa Childers, I'm wondering if you if you reflected at all, you know, because there's kind of this this new movement today of people looking for spiritual answers and the growth of progressive Christianity is now, you know, people exiting the church or reimagining the faith. And I'm wondering if there's any wisdom from the Jesus movement or from what you lived through in the hippie era that you think could maybe, I don't know, just any wisdom that could help reach that culture today or bring revival or is it just too different now it's just that what we're facing now is just too different and and there's really too much of a disconnect to to maybe bring wisdom from 50 years ago into our modern conversation well the culture is different and one of the things i may have even left out in my example of coming to the brink of of this disillusionment in the late 60s um once we did connect with Christianity, there was a huge number of us because we came through the same cultural experience of the, G of the uh, hippie movement and the drug movement. And in a lot of ways, the people that came into the kingdom through and became the Jesus movement were low hanging fruit. We were ready. You know, you didn't have to really convince us. We were looking for truth and Christianity has truth. But I've observed because there's a lot of this now the new Jesus movement thing that you're seeing in, in media right now where people are gathering at the same place we, you know, Pirate's Cove or down at Huntington Beach and they're calling it the new Jesus movement. I, I don't mind that you feel you're, you know, that you're having some, some, some event that is affecting people's lives in a positive way, but you can't produce a Jesus movement just because you declare it to be so. You know, what right. happened in our day was completely, no one could have planned that. No one could have done it by the by the strength of the flesh, it was a work of God. And here's the difference now, why, why I think that, it, that we can't really have the same thing happening, you know, uh, the way it did in the, because that's what people want to do. They want to repeat what happened in the seventies. They want to repeat that huge worldwide impact of the Jesus movement, what we call the Jesus movement. But now we don't have a single counterculture that's affecting the whole world at the same time. You know, you, it's all like little compartments 
you have skinheads and you have white supremacists and you have goths and you have all these different little counterculture groups that are now there were always smaller counterculture groups that existed but never in my opinion never had the world seen such a wide widely impacting worldwide movement as the drug culture of the 60s and so now god's got it in my opinion god's got to do it a different way you know it's it's like he's got to deal with each group on an individual level and as he always does people have to be dealt with on an individual level if it ever gets to the, the point where so the, the, where, where it all is newsworthy again is a matter of how God would do it. Here's another thing. I kind of got distracted because I got on this point. Now. Mm -hmm. We see all this through our American lens. You know, you hear people say, well, boy, I bet you, you know, if it keeps on like this, we're going to have the church is going to be persecuted. Well, just go to Afghanistan or go to some areas of the world. They're getting their heads cut off for, for the Lord. They're in prison for Jesus. So we do tend to, here in America, view things through our American lens. And uh, so when they say a Jesus movement, I think there is a Jesus movement right now throughout the world. But I don't think it's going to be a thing where the, because it was so unique that hippies were getting saved. See, Now, if, if a bunch of people got saved in the U.S., it wouldn't be that newsworthy. You know, nobody would really care that much. And that's what carried a lot of it was the fact that we had this publicity promoting our movement and then people getting saved through that publicity so i don't know if we'll ever have it quite the same way and i don't know if you could really if you're thinking of being a duplicate or or relevant to the 60s the 70s jesus movement i i don't like it when people tag the new jesus movement and i know there's a lot of people believing for that and wanting that but we just i i my opinion is we need to just kick back do our part and god's going to do his part and people are going to get saved, and there will be some kind of movement. But you know, even the Bible says the kingdom comes without observation. And uh, I think a lot's going to happen as God sneaks it in. Not that He's sneaky; I don't mean it that way. But as God works behind the scenes with people's lives to the point that we can't even quantify it, I think there's that is the kind of thing that will go on more toward toward these end end of the end times. Because I've reflected on this question, you know, and I think I've come to a similar conclusion as you is that we, we really need a new work of God you know what is going to be unique I don't know who that voice is going to be like Chuck Smith was but the uncompromised proclamation of the gospel I, I think one of my concerns in our current culture is that with the rise of progressive Christianity and even secular social justice subculture there has been such a watering down of the gospel and i think that the prayer that i'm having is you know someone who really has a vision for that the, the, the gospel really can change people's lives and that there can be an uncompromised commitment to that because that's what i really see in chuck smith was he, he seems to have really believed the gospel could change people's lives. Like, you know, that, that that was a real thing. They didn't have to just change a bunch of external structures, um, but rather looking at, you know, Jesus changes things. I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. The genuine stuff hardly ever makes the news, right? It's kind of like when I my viewpoint on the Grammys or the music that wins the Grammys is not the best in the world. If you want to, we'll talk secular music here. If you want to listen to really great secular music, it's not going to be, you know, there's some great music that wins an award, but, but it's represented to the world as these groups are the hot groups and they're the best and all that and they win the prize. But really good music is on another level. It's kind of the same thing with the church right now. The stuff we see in the news, the people who are on the TV and all that, aren't necessarily representative of what God's really doing on the earth, especially with the church going off the rails like this. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty familiar with that from having a daughter like Elisa and understanding what's really going on in the church. So it's like I told, you know, here's a little example that may uh, provide a more of an illustration. I've come into these, to be a guest, of, I, most of the pastors that have me in do not have mega churches anymore. You know, I've been, I'm not in that circuit anymore. 
So let's say 10 years ago, I'd come into a little church and some guy, I'm making this up kind of, but it's exemplary of real conversations I've had with pastors. You know, he said, well, we've been here 10 years and we've grown to 200. And this Joe Blow came in six months ago with all the flash and the lights and the smoke machines and he got 5,000 people. And I'll say, man, I'd rather pass the 200 world changers than 5,000 pew sitters. You know, it, it, that come there because it's easy. It's, uh, it's no, none of the suffering is preached. It's all the cool stuff. You can have this, you can have that. And I encourage them that way. I say, you know, in the Bible, there weren't mega churches that I know of. And Jesus preached to 5,000 at a time. We want to call that a mega church, maybe. But by and large, the church was house groups and things. So I encourage these pastors, you may, it, here's the deal. You said the word uh, uncompromising. If you preach an uncompromising gospel that covers the whole gospel, which is not just the good part, but the suffering part, you're not going to attract a big crowd in my opinion you'll never grow to over 200 but that's not a bad thing like i say i'd rather uh have 200 world changers in my congregation or people that are really honestly seeking god than 5,000 weekend warriors so to speak so there's that thing going on in big numbers in this in the in the in the world right now these uh famous churches and stuff that's on tv did not does not necessarily represent what god's doing in the world and that's why i say the kingdom comes without observation and i believe that god is quietly working behind the scenes unlike you know maybe ever before as far as we know but it's not covered by the the media anymore so it's a different season right now it's a different season and i'm not discouraged by it uh because i know that god has has got it together you know if i didn't believe that i could be very discouraged once again, I want to encourage everyone to check out Chuck's book, Rock and Roll Preacher. It's available everywhere, and you can connect with him at chuckgerard.com. Thank you so much for doing this with me. It's been a, a fun little romp through the yeah. 60s. Okay, there you have it. And that was that was Chuck Gerard on Theology Mom on YouTube. So you can catch that anywhere. Just go to the Theology Mom on YouTube and look for that fascinating interview. Yeah, I, I was I, very struck by that. And, uh, you know, I kind of agree with Chuck, Chuck on that. And I've heard many reviews on revival. And yes, I do believe in revival. But I think that our the generation that we're living in today is vastly different than it was in the 19th. 1970s and the 1970s. Uh, we don't have Karen Carpenter that's around that's going to save us. She's not going to sing close to you. We don't have all those things that we used to have in the 1970s. And we're, 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 we're coming in, we're, we're in a very different generation. And I, I just don't, I, I, I believe that there's going to be a revival. I think we're going to win the battle, but it's going to be very, very tough because the culture is very different and there's no guarantee whether there's going to be a revival we don't know what the future is going to hold and if you think that uh, we're going to make changes in this next election or another president i i think we might be sadly mistaken we might be betrayed i don't know i mean only the you know, my suggestion is for everybody to get out if you're christian just get out there and continue to pray but you know it's everything is going to come with challenges and you know revival is and guaranteed and all those who keep keep thinking there is they need to come down to reality the the reality that we're living in today and you know we, we, you know we don't know what's going to happen we're not going to go back to the 1970s we're not going to go back to 1980 with ronald reagan and we're not going to those days those days are long gone so we're living in a very different generation and so we're going to get what we're going to get but there's there's no guarantees in anything in life so you know the only the only revival right now is going to be in heaven so i mean i'm very hopeful i want to i want Want to remain positive that there's going to be a revival and i understand that there are christians out there and they strongly believe in revival and they think that things are going to happen but you know we're living in a very different generation and we've got problems in the church and a lot of those churches out there they're not preaching the gospel all they're doing is watering everything down and all they're concerned about is they're just concerned about being liked and oh 
I don't want to offend anybody. So I'll just I'll just say whatever. I don't want to get political I, because if I get political, if I say what I really believe, then people will stop coming and people will walk away. And so I think that there's a lot of churches out there that are just kind of drifting away because they want to be like they don't want to lose that tithe money. You know how it is. But some sometimes, you know, I, I, you know, standing up takes sacrifice. And I, I I appreciate some of the people that are at least trying to stand up for freedom and stand up for the gospel. You know, some sometimes you do have to, sometimes you have to stand up for your principles. And sometimes that is going to take sacrifice and you are going to lose friends. And yeah, there's, if you want, if you want true revival, you're going to pay a price for that. You're going to pay a price for that, right? Everything comes at a price. It it isn't gonna it isn't gonna always be the way you want it so you revival us out there and i fully understand you know i'm with you i want i want i want revival just as much as you do but i also have to think about the reality of this the reality of the culture that we're living in and everything is going to come with its challenges and that's just the way things are. No, yeah, Chuck is right. And I, I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm sure Chuck isn't trying to put anybody down, but I think he's being really honest when he says, you know, we're living in a very different time and it's not the same time. It's not the 60s anymore. It's not the 70s. It's 2020. So we're, you know, COVID-19 has has changed, changed the world. I mean, everything, everything has changed. So we have to, every. All these things are going to take time and true revival is going to take real sacrifice. And there might be a time when you might have to stand up and you might alienate some people. But then again, you know, that's the price you're going to pay if you want to live for God. Uh, to me personally, I would I would I would rather just live for God and, and not worry about what anybody else thinks of me and says, I mean, I don't have to say anything, but I I, I choose. I'm not going to comprom compromise my principles for somebody else. I rather just say what I believe, and if other people don't like it, then so be it. I've, I've said my piece. That's the way it is. If you want, if you want to live, if you want to live for Christ, sometimes you got to pay a little. You got to pay a bit of a price. I mean, I'm not telling other people what to do. I'm not. I'm not pushing my morals on anybody else and telling others how to live. You do as you. You do as you please. But understand, these are these are my principles. These are what I live by, and you do is what you do. So I'm not here to how to push my morals on anybody. I'm not here to push my my laws and tell you how to live. You live the way you want to live, and let me live the way I want to live. You know, everybody's got a right to their opinion. Everybody's got a right. Everybody has a right to their political opinion. They have a right to say what they want, and you know that's absolutely fine. But so do I. I think if we if we're gonna have if everybody has an opinion, and I would appreciate if everyone has their opinion, is not to not to uh, assassinate anyone else's character because you, someone else has a different different view than you. You know, we live in a free country, and you know everyone has a right to different views, and we should have we should be able to have have uh, meaningful debate, and we need to be very loving, and we need to be understanding with each other, but we should. Should remain firm and on what we believe and if we're strong christians out there and we want revival and you know you might have to stand up you might have to stand up to certain people and yeah you are going to lose some friends but you know sometimes there's a price to be paid when you when you have to live for god that's just the way things are so i just wanted to give you guys my two cents and i just wanted to, and i'm i'm very i just want to remain hopeful for the year 2020 22 but as 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 you know as chuck said nothing nothing is guaranteed and you know we're we're all going to get through this together it's going to be a tough battle but we're all going to make it so we've gotten this far in We've gotten this far, so we just need to continue to be thankful to God and of all the wonderful gifts He has given us, and that's what we what we all need to do. So this is Steve again, and this is a Voice Crying in the Wilderness. I'm from Chicago, so I will talk to you again very soon. Bye bye.